seven learners. Today we are going to learn about the measures of central tendency of ungrouped data. By the way, this is teacher Mary J. The following are our most essential learning competencies and our reference is also stated. First, let us define what is central tendency. It is a score that is typical of the distribution of scores, the score that may represent the totality of the distribution. The following are the measures of central tendency. Each has its own applicability depending upon the characteristics of the distribution or the type of scale used. The first one is mean or the arithmetic, arithmetic average of a set of scores. Once again, average. The second one is median, the score that divides the set of scores into two equal halves. The next one is the mode, which refers to the most frequent occurring score in a set of scores. Take note of those three as we solve for mean, median, and mode of ungrouped data. Let us start with the arithmetic mean. In solving for arithmetic mean, we use the formula x bar is equal to the summation of x over n. Again, this is summation. This is a symbol for summation. summation. It means the total number of scores or the total of the data given. N stands for the number of given data. Let us have example number one. It says there compute the mean of the following scores. The scores are as follows. 90, 86, 78, 88, 78, 89, 90, 95, 93, and 86. There are steps that we can follow to solve for arithmetic mean. So the first step is for us to find the sum of all the scores or data or the symbol, the summation of x. To do that, we simply add each of the scores so we have 90 plus 86 and so on until the last score which is 86. When we add all of those, the total is 873. For step 2, we divide the sum that we've got in step 1 by the number of given data or scores which is n. And, and here is 10 because there are 10 scores in the given. We substitute to our formula. So the mean or arithmetic mean is 873 divided by 10. We simply divide the result from step 1 and step 2 and the result is 87.3. It means that the average or arithmetic mean of the given data is 87.3. That ends ex the solution for example number one. Here is example number two. A group of students obtained the following scores in a mathematics quiz. 8, 7, 9, 10, 8, 6, 5, 4, and 3. We will find the mean score of the students. We again follow the steps. For step 1, we find the sum of all the scores. So 8 plus 7 plus 9 plus 10 plus 8 plus 6 plus 5 plus 4 plus 6 is equal to 63. For step 2, we divide it by n. n or the total number of scores in our data is... 9. There are 9 students, so when we divide 63 divided by 9, the result is 7. It means that 7 is the average score of the students. Example 3. 
the age of the service crews in a restaurant are as follows. 19, 21, 20, 47, 18, 18, and 18. We have to find the mean age. For step one, we have to again find the sum of all the ages. The sum is 161. Step two, we divide it by n. In the given, there are seven service crews, so our n is seven. And substituting our, the result in step one and step two to our formula, we have 161 divided by seven. And the result is 23.86. So it means that the average age of the service crews is 23.86. The second measure of central tendency is the median. Here are the steps in finding the median. First, we arrange the scores from lowest to highest. And then after that, we get the middle most score. Take note that if the number of scores is odd or is an odd number, we have to get or we simply get the middle most score. However, if the number of scores is even, we have to find the average of those two or of the two middlemost numbers. Let's look at the examples. Example four, find the median of the scores below. For step one, we arrange the scores from, from lowest to highest. And when we do that, here is the result. So we have 78, 78, 86, 86, 88, 89, 90, 90, 93, 95. Step two, we get the middlemost score. But there are two scores in the middle, which is 88 and 89. So we have to get it, its average. So we first get the sum, which is 177 divided by 2, it is equal to 88.5. So the result or the median for example 4 is 88.5. Here is another example. A group of stu students obtained the following scores in a mathematics quiz. Find the median score of the students. Again, we have to arrange the scores from lowest to highest. When we do that, the result is this. So the lowest score is 3 followed by 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 8, 9, and 10. Step 2, we get the middlemost score. The middlemost score is 7, which makes the median 7. So 7 is the median score of the students in example number five. Example six, the age of the service crews in a restaurant are as follows. We have to find median. Again, for step one, we arrange the scores from lowest to highest. And here is the result. We have 18, 18, 18, 19, 20, 21, 47. Step two, we get the middlemost score or number, and it is 19. It means that the median of the data given is 19. So that is how simple it is, or how easy it is to get the median of an ungrouped data. The third measure of central tendency is the mode. The mode is the most common score or the most frequently occurring value in a given set of data. So there are different types. Unimodal, if the data has only one mode. Bimodal, if it has two modes. And multimodal, if it has more than two modes. It is also possible that the, a data has no mode. Let us look at the following examples. Example 7, find the mode of the following set of scores. So the scores are as follows. 78, 75, 80, 75, 89, 75, 90, 95, 83, and 75. So which among those scores appeared most frequently 
The answer is 75 because 75 appeared four times. So the mode for example 7 is 75. Next, so since it has only one mode, so we could all the type of mode is unimodal. Example 8, find the mode of the scores below. Here are the scores. And in this case, it has three modes, which is 78, 86, and 90. Why? Because 78 appeared twice, 86 appeared twice, and 90 also appeared twice. This is an example of a data which is multimodal because it has more than two modes. And for example 8 or example 9, we have to find the mode of the scores below. We have 19, 21, 20, 17, and 18. As you can see, each of the scores appeared only once, which means that this data has no mode. So those are the examples for mode. Once again, thank you so much for listening to our discussion for this time. The continuation of our lesson will be on the measures of central tendency, this time involving group data. Until next time, bye.